Hello YouTube and welcome to another video. In this one I'm going to be doing some more work on the custom 1100 water box and after the last video ended I actually made myself some end plates and was about to kind of tack this thing together and then I decided that I was actually going to make the top and bottom pipe or the inlet and outlet 2.5 inches and I want to do that just to make sure I don't have any issues with flow and also it's going to be a little easier to build. When I was editing the last video, I cut a bunch of stuff out because I didn't want it to be too long and I was having a hard time to get the video out quickly. Uh, editing videos takes a huge amount of time and that time takes away from the amount of time that I can do actual work. So what I didn't tell you guys was that I actually ended up breaking a couple of bushings on the slip roll. This machine is only intended for 20 gauge, which I think is around one millimeter, and I'm pushing two millimeter stuff through it. So what I think I'm gonna do is make two pieces that are seven inches long, weld them together, and I'll have a 14 inch piece. Anyway, enough chitter chatter, let's just get into it. I hear Megan. All right, I rolled one up. I never thought of it. I should have rolled both of them up at the same time, putting one through and then putting the other through until I got to the end, but uh, it went pretty quick. I got one rolled up and I didn't even take the protective stuff off of the outside of it yet. So that will have kept it in decent shape. All right, I thought I would show you guys what I'm doing with this to try to get more accurate bends, even though I didn't show you the troubles that I was having with it. So what happens is you adjust one side, you adjust the other side, and you don't end up with the adjustment that you actually think you have. I put the material in so that it's actually grabbing. This roller is held in place. And then I start off, I've got the big end of my extension here. And what I do is I tighten this knob down. You can see it's really loose. I tighten the knob down until it's not loose anymore. I can just barely get it out and then I go to the other side and I do the same thing and that way I know that they're even on each side and it's going to bend the metal even and that has helped me quite a bit. Oh, then what I do basically every time I bend the metal I then go back and I have to use something else as a gauge so I use this part of the shaft and then I use this part the thinner part and then I use an 10 millimeter allen key 8 millimeter allen key 6 millimeter Try that again, this time with less filler rod and tungsten. I'm quite pleased with that. That turned out nice, I think. Set that there. 
move on to the next one. I don't know if you guys heard that, the torch kind of acted up for a second, but then it seemed to sort itself right back out again. They both went really well. I am surprised. Good penetration. Looking good. Show you guys this one. Now I guess what I need to do is weld these together. So I'm going to make sure that they're perfectly parallel. I'm going to try to make a piece, I have a piece of angle iron. I'm going to, anyway, I'll just show you what I'm going to do to make sure that they're perfect. And they're actually, <laughs> wow. That is kind of crazy. They're actually pretty much perfectly lined up. There's no gap the whole way around. I thought for sure I was going to have to do a bunch of filing or sanding. I'm gonna try going from this spot just to that spot. I'm not gonna go too far because if I try to be a hero and go a little bit too far, it's, uh, yeah, I'm gonna lose sight of the weld or I'm gonna just, yeah, it's not gonna go well. So. Alright, that's about my limit of of movement. I can't I need I need practice at this. I know a good welder could easily probably go a third of the way around this, but I almost tried going over that and then I was like, no Joel, that's not smart. Start fresh. <laughs> I did it! I'm guessing nobody cares, but uh, that's a pretty big deal for me. So that's where my weld started there and ended. And I went around this way, over the seam. Yeah, ended there. That is a nice looking weld too, I think. Alrighty. I am pleased with that. Now I need to make the pieces that will be the sides and the baffles of the water box. I already made these in uh, two and a half inch to two inch, but I have to remake them 
because they won't be wide enough and yeah, that's a good enough reason. I sometimes get really excited about a project, especially when it's going well. I get a momentum going and I just want to move on to the next thing and keep going. And uh, that's usually when I make mistakes and do something stupid. So what I'm actually going to do, it's uh, a quarter to 11. I'm going to mark these pieces out, the side pieces out, and I'm going to do the rough cuts. And then I'm going to come back tomorrow, which is Saturday, and I will... Uh, I will finish those pieces out because if I try to go through the whole thing and I try to do more than just cut them out tonight, I'm probably going to make some mistakes. So what was supposed to be a quick job turned out to be an hour long, um, partly because I had to make four of these and I was thinking that I only had two, so it took twice as long. Two of these are going to be the outside walls of the pipe. And then there's going to be a front and a back plate that's going to be something like 10 inches by seven and a half inches. And then these two plates are going to be cut in half and be baffles that go inside of the water box itself. I don't know if I mentioned it in a video yet, but I got a kit with the stubby gas lenses. It's also got the Pyrex, Pyrex cups, a couple of those. All right, not everything is perfect here. I did the edges in the belt sander. Not everything's perfectly square, perfectly lined up. So what I'm actually gonna do, I'm gonna peel the plastic off of these and I'm gonna put them in the mill and mill all of the edges down so that they're perfectly square, perfectly flat. It's going to make it easier to measure things out, which means less mistakes, and it's also going to make things easier to weld up. I need to mark these circles in here to the 5 inch mark. I need to mark these cutouts to the 5 inch mark. You can describe a line in there like that. close as I'm gonna get because if I make a mistake and ruin one I ruin all four because they're all strapped together so I'm gonna move over to the other side I'm not gonna film the whole procedure here but I thought I would uh, film myself working the handles just so you guys can get a little bit of amusement on uh, me seeing 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 Take my eyes open to force reality. Why can't you just let me eat my weight and glee? I live inside my own world of make-believe. All right, there's a little bit better lighting over here, so I figured I would show you guys again. Show off my uh, handiwork. Kids screaming in the cradles, profanities. Some days I just can't eat it, then I'll be a days. Sometimes I can't tell if my body belongs to me. I love everything. Fire spreading all around my room. My world's so bright, it's hard to breathe, but that's alright. All right, I finished the other side up off camera and got them fitting perfect so that I can get them welded on. Some of you might be thinking that I should have left one of them with a cap on it so that I could cap off the outlet 
So the reason why I didn't do that, I've actually been talking to a couple of people in the comment section about it, is that I'm thinking about in the future actually building a bypass valve into the exhaust. So what I could have done is just made one of these longer and capped off the end. But the reason why I didn't do that is because the exhaust is say going to come in here and then it's going to come out through here and down through the chambers and out the center of here. This is going to have a hole in it and the exhaust is going to go out through there. But in the <clears throat> However, my world is falling apart. However, in the future, what I might do or what I hope to do is actually put a bypass valve on the end of the water box here. So the exhaust will come in here from the stinger and instead of going in through the chamber, there will be a bypass that actually goes straight out through the side of the hole. And that will make a lot of noise. I kind of gave these a little push shove everything together and I wanted to show you guys how good it actually fit together. When I push it together, I can pick it up. I can almost pick, oh. That's how good it fits together. No tape, no glue, no welds. Well, that's pretty cool. Is that right there and there? Yes, that is center. All right, folks, here is the water box set together. It doesn't have a top or a bottom on it or a front and a back, however you want to look at it. But uh, this is the basic layout of it. The exhaust is going to come in through this hole. There's going to be a cutout here. The exhaust will come down and split into two and it will go through here, up and then down. And there's going to be a cutout here and here and the exhaust will exit out through each side of the hull. Um, I thought about doing some fancy stuff like putting a little wedge in here to make the uh, flow of the exhaust go through. I thought about bending these pieces Instead of just having baffles, I thought about bending them so that they, you know, made the flow of the exhaust all nice. But uh, I don't think that's required because once it gets to here, it splits into two. The next thing that I'm going to do is actually make the front and back plate for this. Uh, I think I'm going to make them a little bit oversized. So the absolute smallest that they could be is seven and a half inches that would bring them from this point to this point and they need to be that big to actually seal it up but I think I'll actually make it eight inches and that way instead of welding on the seams along here I can actually fold the material around or use some of the extra material to weld along the edges I'm not going to show you guys the process of cutting the front and back out because it's basically just cutting up some sheet. It's going to be 8 inches by 10 inches, two of those, and uh, I'll just come back when that's done. Oh snap! Look at this. It doesn't look quite as nice with the uh, blue stuff stuck on it, obviously, but uh, ta-da! Open up your water box, take a look inside. Yeah, that's how that's going to go on there. I left a little bit of overhang on each side so that I'll have a nice spot to weld there. Still have to sand down the welds on each side around here so that I can uh, get a nice tight fit so that I'm not struggling there. I still need to cut out a couple of places like around where the exhaust comes in and around where the exhaust goes out. I explained that to you guys already, but there's one thing that I didn't explain and I'll explain that right now. And that is that when the exhaust comes in through here and comes down, this area is going to fill with water. 
And unless I have some sort of drain for the water, it is actually going to fill up to here before it spills out of the exhaust. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a few small holes in the two and a half inch pipe. And that way, by regulating the amount of water that goes into the water box, I can regulate, uh, should be able to regulate the, the sound deadening properties of the exhaust. Because if I dump a lot of water into it really quickly, then this will fill up with more water and that will cause more muffling effect. All right, jet ski fans, that's gonna do it for this video. I want to get more done, but uh, I didn't for a couple of reasons. Uh, the main reason is kind of because I forgot about Valentine's Day until the last minute. And so I ended up making a gift for Megan and uh, yeah, don't tell her that, but uh, that's the truth. <laughs> also, I kind of, didn't want to stop working on the project so instead of going and editing video like i should have i continued working on the exhaust system and so it's actually more completed than you're seeing at this point in the video i'm going to try to release another video fairly soon i do have more footage for this build probably Tuesday I will release the, the video where I actually weld everything together and get the water box completed. As of now, it's still not totally completed, but um, yeah, not a whole lot left to do. Anyway, that's going to do it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.